All right, welcome to this video of some more two mans from the Junk Aristocrats deck we played last week in the daily. Sorry about the audio issues; it ended up making it so that we couldn't actually upload all the videos. Uh, so you guys know, uh, my name is Sky, writer on the end step, and uh, we're gonna play some two mans today. This hand looks a little slow against aggro, but everything else, as long as they give us a little time to develop, I'm pretty happy with this hand. We have our colors. Um, we're also on the draw. It makes life a little easier for us to keep. And snap aggro. Well, sometimes that happens. And sometimes we are the luckiest. So this hand is insane given the turn one shock. Doesn't look like it has anything overly explosive. 2-2 two, two Noble is not really worrisome here. Pretty much here we're just trying to stem the bleeding. As long as we can reach the late game, we really can't lose against this deck, so... Throwing away Ooze to a 2-2 two, two is pretty okay to me. Even if he just uses Burn, it's not going to our face. As expected, used a piece of burn. He's got a pretty good hand so far, but Lingering Souls into Desecration Demon usually shuts them down a little bit. Garrick, not a bad one. By the way, if, uh, if you happen to hear any uh, amassments of clicking in the background, the League of Legends World Championships is going on right now, and, and my room is flooded by it. Well... This doesn't look good. We're gonna only be able to block one creature. Take nine damage, go to six. Let's see. We're gonna definitely block the one we can kill. Uh, we just need to get pe creatures off the board. Uh, arguably, we could try and block Stromkirk to make sure we can fight it with Garrick this turn. Um, most likely, had we not drawn Voice, we were just gonna jam Desecration Demon. Um, that's still definitely an option. But given that he's on two cards and we got rid of his striker, we're just going to throw out Voice, which is really hard for him to get through, and uh, Flashback Lingering Souls setting up, hopefully, um, a good Soren next turn with a few more things off the board. Yeah. Easy no attack. Sometimes Moto just asks you to make these decisions. Hits his fourth land. If he goes Hellrider here, we're in some trouble. Um, yep. No, second Phoenix. That's a lot less trouble. Um, we're definitely going to just try and trade with a Stromkirk Noble right here. Um, everything else dies. Well, actually, Stromkirk Noble isn't that much of a threat uh, at the moment. We're going to have a continuous stream of chump blockers for him. Um, so I think we just need to try and get as many things off the table as possible right now. Um, he may have burned to occur this phoenix, but we can't really take the chance of, of just letting him have as many creatures as possible here. Um, also, it's 100% unlikely as Pillar of Flame, he would have just killed the Voice of Resurgence pre-combat. Alright, so right here, we're in an interesting position. Um, I think we have to play Garrick. Uh, because if we fight, kill the Phoenix, and he just doesn't, the last card in his hand isn't a shock, uh, and he doesn't rip some piece of basically any spell, um, we can kill his Phoenix, block his Stromkirk, he'll have to activate Mutavolt, sending it to, uh, pardon, sending it to Garrick as well. Um, it's questionable whether or not Garrick is worth Chandra's Phoenix and alleviating six points of damage from the face. Um, another choice we could make is just playing Desecration Demon, which actually seems pretty good here. Um, it means our elemental is probably going to get thrown under the bus, but at least we're going to kind of pad our life total. Um, Soren's also not the worst choice, but just like with Garrick, um, if he throws everything at it, 
it's still going to take some damage, and if he rips the spell, um, we're pretty dead. Um, the other advantage to Desecration Demon is with flying. Um, he can't force through the extra damage he could otherwise. He's thinking real hard about sacrificing here, but uh, realizes he probably can't kill us without a spell. No need to sack right now. Also, I'd like to thank Tim Smith, our uh, co-helper from last time. Pointed out the mute of all activation here that... Uh, that would have been really embarrassing if Sky had missed that. Yes, makes Garrick line a little harder to make work, but... Given that he's just animating Mute of Alt to sacrifice it, um, pretty much indicates that Elemental is going to have to get thrown under the bus here to prevent uh, Searing Spear just killing us on the spot. Interesting though, this is going to be the last time he's going to be able to just throw a, throw a creature away to Desecration Demon without giving us blocks. They're a little better here. Only thing we really fear is burn. Brimstone volley definitely counts as burn. Yeah. Couldn't really beat Brimstone volley. Um, we could have played Sin Collector, but then we're guaranteeing ourselves to take the two damage from uh, Phoenix, giving him equal opportunity to just kill us with a burn spell the next turn. Alright, so. This is probably one of our easiest matchups, in all honesty. Um, bring in the Fiend Slayer Paladins, bring in the extra removal, mostly just to um, stymie him till the late game, where we pretty much can't lose as long as he doesn't just have us dead on board, like right there. Um, Veryl's isn't very strong here, neither is Blood Artist. Um, Veril's kind of, you need a little bit of a longer game. He doesn't help you get to the longer game so much. Um, Blood Artist does an attacker block. Pretty much all you need to say to get it out of the deck in this matchup. Um, usually we cut the Desecration Demons because he didn't show us any Young Pyromancers, but the Mono Red deck has very much moved into the Young Pyromancer build. Um, we cut one Obsidat because we need our curve to be a little lower to kind of fight him. And from here, it's kind of like just where you really don't where you want to tweak to make the last two slots the best. Um, Soren's, Garrick's, Barter, and Obsidat, one Obsidat are all very good here. Um, our threes are pretty solid. Um, I don't like both Golgari charms. Um, he might have he might have Burning Earth, but that's why we have the uh, two Appetites, which also hit Hellriders. Um, so given that we cut one Golgari charm with one card left, um, it's pretty much just exactly how you want to customize the deck. I like to cut one Cartel Aristocrat. Um, she's a little underwhelming compared to some of our other things, and cards like Doom Traveler are incredibly important in this matchup. Otherwise, we'd usually just find one of those to cut as the last slot. All right, we're on the play, and this hand is awkward. We have early removal, and even though we can't cast these Travelers, a white source pretty much makes this hand unbeatable. I think we're going to give it a shot. And by unbeatable, by the way, I mean for this deck, which doesn't really have any can't win, can't possibly lose hands. It mostly just has can possibly stall till victory. Alright, there we go. You luck. Yes, Tim you, joining us. You are so lucky. Joining us from the corner where he's currently playing League of Legends. So didn't have turn one creature. Usually means his hand is going to be stacked full of removal. Um, very important thing to play around in this matchup is Electricery out of the board. Uh, that card is 100% getting slipped. Uh, it's one of the most troublesome cards for us. Um, we also want to have mana open for the rest of the game for more hard removal spells. And while we could go for a blow with Golgari Charm, we mostly just want to ensure that he doesn't have any board presence for as long as possible. Um, basically just keep him off active threats for as long as possible. Which 
Chandra's Phoenix here would be unfortunate, given that he's on five cards post playing a creature. Um, almost guaranteeing some burn, so using hard removal against it almost isn't worth it, especially when currently we're racing two for two. Um, and we have hard removal for his actual threats. Chandra's Phoenix can be annoying, but it's it's rarely worth using hard removal for unless unless you're in dire straits. Uh, what do we have here? We have another fire for striker. And a Rakdos Kepler. So right here, we're pretty okay. We'll see we'll see what he does, but we're pretty okay with just letting both of these live. Um, consider using Warp Decay on the Fire Fist Striker. Well, he's down to four cards, and the only other creature we care about that dies to Abrupt Decay. Mm, I think it's better to hold it, especially since Doom Travelers will always be able to trade with him. But there aren't too many other creatures we care about enough for Abrupt Decay. But kind of have to to respect the fact that he can always be traded up with by a Doom Traveler. Alright, so we drew Lingering Souls here. Um, it's one of the best cards in this matchup. However, given him that he has four cards and the fact that he very well could have... Uh, very well could have... Pardon me. Could very well have Electricery here. Uh, I'd much rather just hold up hard removal for Land Hellrider. And also, if he does nothing um, prior to attacks, we can Golgari Charm. Um, basically, trade our Travelers for his Firefish Striker and take one. Um, or we can just do nothing and just hold up um, Abrupt Decay if he, liked, if he just moves to combat right away. So, five cards in hand, two Firefish Strikers and a Cackler later. Pretty much just have to put them on uh, reactive burn spells, um, sideboard cards like that. I'm not too sure that he's not just holding Hellrider, Hellrider here, but... Alright, given that he hasn't done anything, I think we're just going to Abrupt Decay um, before damage. Make sure uh, we're not taking more than we have to. Kill the guy that can block, even though he's not likely to, um, just to try and force through more damage. Um, given that he hasn't really done anything, um, and we're obviously re representing Tragic Slip, making it... Ooh, another card we can kill with Gauri Charm. Um, as I was saying, representing Tragic Slip makes it a little precarious for him to run out a real threat here post-combat. Um, Lightning Mauler, though, not really an issue. Whatever it pairs to. Ooh, that was a sweet one. So, we're going to attack for two here. Um, um, no, we'll just attack for one. Um, we had kind of have to force through as much damage as possible early. Um, as long as we can guarantee to, to maintain our life total, which... Doom Traveler kind of keeps Lightning Mauler back, so I'm fine with that. Um, he's stuck on three lands, so it's very possible he's just holding gas. Um, drawing appetite here is gonna gonna let us get quite a bit. Okay, so we were right. Um, he's a little stuck on lands, kind of restricted on what he wants to do. This firefish striker is a little awkward because it means he's gonna get to make our doom traveler not block, um, and we don't take anything here. But we now know about most of his tricks. Um, they're pretty easy to play around. Play around. Um, Especially given the fact that uh, should he draw land, we have the ability to uh, blow him out incredibly hard with Golgari Charm here. Um, if he goes land, Lightning Mauler, Firefish Striker, we just absolutely pull the, tr pull the uh, trigger on this Golgari Charm. Um, oh, there's the land. So we knew what he drew for turn. We'll see how ambitious he gets, uh, knowing that we've left up Golgari Charm mana. He's 100% has to play the striker here. Um, there's no way he would just trade a Lightning Mauler for half of a Doom Traveler. Let's see. 
He is choosing to pair, so it's very unlikely he's going to play out the Lightning Mauler. Oh, getting ambitious here. Uh, walking directly into our blowout. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to let him move to combat. We're going to Golgari Charm, everything off the board, and then put one of the Spirit Tokens in front of the Cackler, leaving us with a Spirit Token, a Lingering Souls, and a Putrefy against his Searing Spear Pillar of Flame. Um, this is the kind of tempo that should lock up the game, uh, even if we're stuck on lands. We know he's not really on anything too proactive. Yep, as expected. Um, Holy crap, the blowouts. We're going to move to end of attackers. Got to do it the other way of mana. Before blocks, after his trigger is resolved, we're going to go Gari Charm. Get everything minus one, minus one. Make him a very, very sad panda here. Um... Move to blocks and trade one spirit for. So we traded um, two halves of a Doom Traveler and a spirit token for his entire board. And now we get to just untap. We, we drew one of our better cards, Paladin, even though we can't cast it yet. Um, it's good to just kind of have in the back of our pocket. And we have Lingering Souls to follow up. Um, we know his hand is Pillar Spear, so not very afraid. Um, even if he rips something like Hellrider, oh. he drew a uh, Chandra's Phoenix, which we're not going to really. We're we're fine taking two to trade for three at this point. We know what's in his hand. He has five points of damage in his hand. Um, we drew a real good one, um, Temple Garden. We're one hundred percent going to take the shock here. Um, going to fourteen isn't that dangerous. We're at virtual nine. Um, even after attacks, we're only at virtual seven. If you were to go Hellrider, one you'd have to tap out, so we're we're not dead to burn spells right there. But if you went Hellrider and attacked, we would take seven going to virtual two. Uh, we would gain two back and have future five for his Hellrider, plus leaving back spirits to trade. So given that we know two cards in his hand, he's in a, a very bad position. Lightning Mauler is perfectly fine. Um, from here, we're most likely, unless we draw a land, we're just holding up Future 5. If we draw a land, we get to... Alright, so we did. We drew an untapped land. Um, we know both cards in his hand, so we don't have to play around Electricery so much, but uh, it's still a good idea to keep it in mind. He's racing a lot of damage here, plus life gain. I, I, think, I think he's banking on drawing something to haste up but I can't think of anything relevant he would uh, haste up here to kill us on the spot Thundermaw would be a problem uh, but you have to have land Thundermaw so I, I'm pretty sure this game is on is 100% locked but I doubt he concedes before we actually force the damage through Yep. Okay, I was gonna say attacks here seem unlikely, but uh, he has spear open to trade if we'd like. Um, yeah, we're taking four plus. Let's say two, let's say his most effective burn spells. So. What would be the best? So if you drew another pillar, that's pillar, pillar, spear, that's 7 damage plus 4 is 11. We're still not dead, but we're getting close. Um, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We have lethal on board, so we're just going to take this here. He can't kill us under any draw circumstance. Um, and we have lethal on board, assuming he... We know two. We know three cards in his hand. Um, if he has to burn any burn spell on our creatures, we're, we're locked to win this. Yeah, so we drew the Hellrider. We're gonna we're gonna putrefy this because we don't want him to untap with that either way. Um, 
But this means we're going to force him to use his burn spells on our creatures. Or at least one of them to prevent exactly lethal here. Oh, he's just going to scoop it up. Seen enough. We get to go to, to game three where he's on the play, which is a little bad for us, but one from worse. All right, so he didn't show us the pyromas pyromancer plan. It looks like he's more traditional, which means we bring back in the desecration demons, take out the obsidat. Um, the problem here is finding the last cut. Uh, like I said, it'd usually be something like a doom traveler. We didn't see electricery. Probably has it, but didn't see it, which is a little curious. Um, should I think we only go back to one one demon here. Second demon, we don't want to get clogged on fours, um, especially against this this type of deck. So just a slight change up for game three on the draw. A little bit more power in. Um, dropping the curve. One more slot. But it's going to be a tough one. This is gonna be a really good game. As you can as you can hear, we're very excited about the uh, the world championships. Currently it's TSM versus SKT. And we're on the draw here, but as with every one lander, six spells look so good, but can't win without the lands to cast. Still runner runner. Runner runner. We did that a couple times. We yeah. we we played a daily where we four owed and we, we kept one land and something very similar to this ripped uh, woodland off the top into Temple Garden for for optimal value. Our opponent mulled to six. Um, yeah, even on the draw, if we had a tragic slip or some way to defend ourselves against a turn one play, um, I'd be much more tempted to keep this, but I think we're going to join our, our opponent down here at six. And this hand is... Oh, well... Honestly, it's much better than our seven. Uh, I'd be, I'd be more tempted to try and draw spells here than than tempt our luck with lands, especially since we have scavenging use, which is one of the most important creatures we could have. Um, wow, he he kept a a really slow hand. We're not gonna jam out the ooze into searing spear mana. Um, the longer we can just kind of play draw go, the the much happier we are. So. I'm I'm happy letting him spear us to the face instead of instead of killing our creature here. Gonna guess he's gonna have Chandra's Phoenix. Yep. Not the worst, given that we're just gonna be able to Garrick fight that. Um, ooh, or we could abrupt decay it. Um, given the fact that. We have scavenging use in hand. Uh, he's on three cards. I'm gonna guess there's a Hellrider in there. Um, I think we're going to just pass an abrupt decay on his turn. Um, scavenging use will then be able to come down and eat his Chandra's Phoenix. Yeah, he just kept mono high drops here, so we're gonna kill this. Um, next turn, plays play Garrick and fight. Um, fight this Hellrider. He'll be down on two cards. We'll have a scavenging who's active. Alright, appetite here, pretty good. Um, still doesn't change the plan at all. Uh, actually, if we grow our ooze, we're pretty okay here either way. So, I think we're going to appetite, find out what he's working with. Um, hopefully we hit something like the second Hell Rider or Burning Earth. Um, Mountain Brimstone Volley. Volley is one of the cards that is easiest to play around when you know about it. Um, it does mean that he's going to be able to kill our scavenging use, even if we grow it. Um, but we're gonna we're gonna force it out of his hand. Um, also, is gonna gain us back a life, so we'll go to twelve. Make sure uh, if he turns Volley towards us, he doesn't get this Chandra's Phoenix back. But most likely he's just going to burn it onto Ooze, and then we get to Garrick fight, and we're back at Parody. Um, Parody's a good place for us this late, especially with so many live draws. Yep, as expected. 
we go to eight, kill his Hell Rider. The mountain we knew about. Ooh, that is a wonderful follow-up. Uh, probably should have played the shotgun there. Just misclicked. Um, I guess we get to represent Tragic Slip, but I'd much rather not waste the time bluffing when uh, this two life might be relevant. So we don't know the last card in his hand. Um, Hellrider is, I think, in a lot of situations, if this was anything but Hellrider, um, let's say it was just like a Lightning Mauler. Well, Lightning Mauler traits, but let's say it's just a vanilla 3-3 Canyon Minotaur. Um, putting out a 2-2 is very reasonable here, but Hellrider is just too explosive. If you were to draw another one off the top, we're just dead. Um, I don't want to give him, give him a way to just kill us. So think sadly we have to one for one four drops but given that he's on one card in hand and we have a, a pretty good follow-up that shuts down the majority of his deck um, the only better thing would be lingering souls because then we could play both sadly again not playing out the shotgun hurts us to do that but um, if he's just sitting on burn fiend slayer paladin is a is an unbelievable t um, way to turn the tides and golgari charm doesn't hurt either So, despite being Searing Speared, having an Ooze of Brimstone Volleyed and Hellrider come down, I am pretty confident with this match. Um, you know, drawing Lingering Souls there, pretty, pretty insane. Gonna skull crack us. That's actually kind of fine. There's no spell he could have in hand that kills us here and you know, as much as it's no fun to knock in the life I'm I'm pretty okay with that being the burn spell he was holding back here holding up Golgari charm in case he tries to electricery us we kinda just need to keep a creature base out here and uh alright so he's got two spells alright so we're gonna 100% duress him here force whatever he has out of his hand or just see if he's on air. Yeah, he's on air. So, we're just gonna start bashing. This game is gonna quickly be over. Um, his most live draw is Hellrider, but we're gonna we're gonna flashback souls here with Golgari Charm back up for regen in case he rips something sweet. So, um, all things considered, this game looks looks pretty well in hand. Barter and Blood, a lot better earlier in the game. Right now, dead draw. Chunking in for six and passing the turn. He's on four cards. Um, we know two of them are mountains. There's Lightning Mauler is fine. Um, as much as I don't want to make him sack, or I don't want to sack our four. Lingering Souls tokens. Um, I'm not that upset. Uh, should we? Should we be forced to? Um, here. Let's see. What would the damage difference here be? Two, three, four, five. So we deal him five, and actually, that's that's actually pretty okay. Um, as much as Lightning Mauler normally doesn't matter. Um, should he rip Hellrider, or just have Hellrider and be trying to bait us out? Um, I very much don't want him having a second creature. Um, we also have Doom Traveler and uh, extra spirit tokens to sack. So this doesn't actually change our clock. Um, Doom Traveler plus the barter actually means that we, we only lose one spirit overall. Um, we lose two points of damage, but we put him to three, making it lethal in the air. Um, and pretty much cut out every possible out he could have. Uh, and 
let's, uh, he's gonna make us swing out here. Uh, four. Yeah. Um, if he had, say, two removal spells or something like an electricery, he could sort of get us, but not really. Yeah. So, he electricries finally. Uh, card we, we pretty much put him on having since game two. And, uh, we get to use our own counter tech. Um, we don't get in for four, but... He has to throw away his noble or go to one. Yep, so he goes to one, we go to thirteen, and we get to keep around our spirits. He has to have another electric read to not die. So here's to anything but electric read. And let's see. Three cards in hand. That that looks like the the dying with honor attack, if ever I've seen it. Huh? No, Rakdos Cackler, hundred percent not unleashed. If he if he goes unleashed, I will I will have a mighty yeah. He knows how to die with honor, this gentleman. Move to the kill step. Yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna take this pack and we're gonna call it a good victory. Uh, pretty much one upped his tech with our Golgari charms both games, and uh, pretty much showed the reason why Junk Aristocrats is pretty good deck to play online. Any mono red deck you run into, you have a, a fantastic matchup against. So, thanks for watching. We'll uh, see you next round.